Hello, welcome to the first video of the building tool. So here we all already in Houdini and for our building tool, it's going to work on boxes and patterns. So let's start by building a simple box here and jump into the geometry layer of that, of course. So we need to have a box shape that represents a house. So of course, uh, my default cube one by one is going to be probably too small. So of course, like make this a bit bigger, like so. Uh, like you can just take these handles, make it somewhat bigger. Um, but I usually also just like pick the uniform scale and set that maybe to five. So we can see that we have like a pretty large cube. And on that cube now, we then want to place our building logic. And luckily for us, with the side effects lab team, we have like building generators for us. So we're going to type in building from patterns. So that's basically also what the tool will be doing. So it needs a building shape, so box, and it will convert that into then actual pattern shapes uh, or like places your modules based on patterns. So what you currently see now is this grid and this is the base result. So there is a built-in example on this tool where we're just going to place it, where we're just going to place basic squares. So this is mainly for just visualizing uh, let's, for example, say if my cube was very small, you basically have this, which is like only one model. So that's why I just scaled it by five. So if I now would play with my box, you can see that my building tool will update and place these sort of like squares based on how large the building is. So of course, we want to fill in our own models, our own patterns, our own systems. So we're going to use here then these settings for defining the pattern. So I will talk a bit more about the menu later. Uh, and I first of all want to here plug in patterns. So the way we can do that is we can just make a simple grid. So here on the side. And this grid, uh, we can here grab the size, let's say two by three. And let's say our rows and columns are two and two. So we just have a very simple polygon. So this also might need to be rotated like 90 degrees. So it's actually aligned like so. Then after that, I probably need to match size. So this will basically automatically align it along the rows. So if you automatically want the bottom part to be sitting on the grid, we're going to say Y to min. It's now sitting there. But what we can also say is that, for example, the Z and the X axis are also, for example, a min or a max value. You can see that there might be some changes here, like so, like min and max value. Um, so I'm going to keep that to center for now, but in a moment I will change that and you will see why. So we have now this, let's say that this is my model. In a moment I will also bring in some other models. This is my model and I need to define the data on how this is going to be used. And we need to do that by uh, the building uh, utility tool. So here we have building utility tool. So we plug that in. And here we need to first of all give this a name. So currently we are here just making a building module. So we're going to just say I want here building A. So whenever I type in A, it's referring to this simple plane. Then here we have our dimensions and I can click autofill dimensions. So it automatically will get the bounds of the object and do that. Now, if you look closely to what we are seeing here now is I have this little orange guide that is actually representing how the input model should be uh, rotated and what direction it should be faced. So first of all, I noticed that my model also needs to be rotated. So my plane, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so it nicely aligns and faces the same direction as the arrow here. So it needs to be in that same direction. Then I also noticed that we need to move our geometry into uh, the pivot here. So we're going to go back to the match size node. We're going to say the Z axis to either min like so. So we are actually having the pivot point of my models here on the corner perfectly. So this is my pivot point for all the models going forward. And this is now nicely aligning up with my square here with this orange guide. So mainly the direction and pivot point are very important here. Otherwise your uh, models will be placed in an off or odd position. 
So we have now our models. Uh, so I can just also give this a name, like this is model A. I can later on make model A, B, C, as many as you want. Now, we also need to figure out how how is this model going to behave over floors. So we also need to describe here, as you might see, we can also describe a floor pattern. So we're basically going to copy the system. And we are now going to here make a floor uh, base layer. And the size of this doesn't matter anymore. Like if this is, for example, one by one, it doesn't matter that much anymore. It's, it's mainly currently a bit of floor data about the data it actually holds, the attributes it stores on this geometry. So we're going to switch here to floor description. And in here, we need to define what exactly is going on. So first of all, we need to give this a name, uh, like we can sort of call this like base walls, like just basically placing sample walls along the shape. That we can enable here to expand form. And we can type in here my pattern. So this is how the model A would behave over the floor base wall. So what we can do now is we can use different bra brackets. We can use these brackets or we can use these brackets. So for now I'm going to use this one and I'm just going to type in A. So what this basically means now is we are just going to place the model A as much as possible. That's basically what it's mean now. Also very importantly is to set the dimensions. But right now it's set to zero, zero, uh, which basically means that the tool will uh, see this as the height zero, which basically can be seen as an infinite B, infinite placing model because the scaling is zero. So what is mainly important here for this one is actually the height, which is the second value. So the floor, of course, is mainly about defining the height. So we can say that this is, for example, dimension one. And then the height, of course, needs to be similar to our model here, which is three. So our height is three. So when that is done, we are simply going to merge the data. So we're going to merge the model with the floor data. And we're going to continue to input that into our tool. We now have our pattern generic, which is what you see here. Uh, we can also here now show the floors that are possible. So I will check what are the types of floors that are possible and I will preview them here. So I can just copy the name and replace generic with our own base wall. And also make sure you have the brackets on the side as well. And as you can see, now we are placing our own model. So if I would give this a quick color, you will see that this is our own model. So let's make this, for example, in orange. So this is my custom model. So if I would now play around with this model, uh, you will see that we will automatically place either more of them or less of them based on the size. So this is a model that we can quickly change. And so now you have a basic understanding of how to implement a custom basic pattern. Uh, we're going to make a bit more interesting pattern. So we're going to copy paste this and we're going to create now model B. So let's create model B here. So we're going to call this model B. And let's give this a more interesting color like green. And we can plug it in over here. And of course, by default, it's not going to do anything because we have not assigned it or we have not told model B what to do. So we're going to go here. And now we also want to include model B. So either we can add B to our current logic. So after we place model A, I want you to place model B. So we're going to do it like so. So this way we can now be placing model uh, A and then B and then A and then B. So we're going to repeat that process over and over and over again until we basically fill up the whole floors. So let's remove that back to A. Let's say I only want model B to be at the end and the beginning. So with that, we're going to use some of the different brackets. Uh, we're going to use these brackets and we're just going to say B in there. So it's only now starting off the pattern with model B and then it will just fill the rest of the floor with, with A. We can just also say N, uh, to end with model B. So now we're going to start and begin with model B. You can see this as a corner system already, like this is sort of like a corner, but we also here have special options here to plug in a corner, as you can see. So I can also here press B in here as well. And you can see like I will also automatically place uh, the models here on the corners as well. So you can either do it that way or you can do it another way. 
to just so many ways of, of how we can use this pattern. So quickly here on the side. So if you're going to use um, these brackets, uh, which is basically means uh, repeat. And if you're going to use this one, then basically this is like a do uh, once, for example, like do this one single time and then move over to the next logic. Uh, and then with that, you can just uh, keep playing around with it. Uh, we can just now again, like add, for example, model C to this as well. Give this another color and we can plug it in over here. I'm going to call this model C and we can, for example, now say, uh, first place B, C and then place A and then again uh, with C, B like so. So we're now placing again these models based on what we are describing here. What is also quite interesting to know is that we can place numbers after these. So if I press 2, it will place them two times. So here if I press this 2, it will both of them have like two times uh, that model being placed. So here we're going to remove that here quickly. So we have a pattern like so. Now we are currently having three different models and one four. So of course, our models over time will get very large, uh, but of course we can make more floors. So we can just copy paste here another floor. Uh, we can give this like another name as well. So let's say uh, for uh, floor two or something and we can just um, make it a bit more interesting and let's say we want to start with a then we want to place model b and then we want to finish off with model a like so let's bring it in over here and let's see our result now so here again, if I would get floors, we will now have the option to place floor two and I can replace that over here. So as you can see, what we basically are doing with this new pattern that we have is again, we will place model A and then in the middle of the logic, we will place module B and then we're going to continue with placing A. So that way we can, as you can see, like control how I specifically can target sort of like roughly the middle of the building. Um, of course, we can again like place the number here, like I want this three times. And you can just like play around with the logic more and more and more. What is also interesting to know here is the logic that we are creating here for floors, like we're specifically uh, making like the floor logic, so one module here at a time. We can also uh, create this logic here on the whole building. So we can use the same brackets here. For example, base wall can happen at all the way at the, at the bottom. So we're going to say place base wall. So the first wall here will be like the base wall. And then we're going to just fill up the building with floor number two. And then we have a result like that. So the next step is probably like you want to plug in your own models probably. So we're going to here switch out a couple things to plug in our own models. And I've already prepared this quickly here. So I basically have a simple model here from uh, Project Titan. So you can like model this in, in another software. You can model it in Houdini. You can get from Scans, things like that. So you can just load in the file and then you have it, for example, here like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just like get rid of the logic or the grids here. So we're going to move the grids aside and I'm going to override here model A and model B. Uh, so don't necessarily have like a model C right now. Uh, so maybe let's remove model C from my logic and I'm just going to delete that like so. So now if I would go back to my tool, we should see our building here. And there are probably a few tweaks that we of course need to make. So first of all, I noticed that my alignment here is not perfect. We are definitely like getting not a perfect corner. So we want to make sure here that the match axis node is set to none. Uh, so we're not moving the model too much because otherwise we are losing the nice alignment. So again, like these models are made in a very specific way with a specific pivot point here at the center. That's something that you have to communicate well to the people or the artists who are making these models that you need to have like exact pivot locations. 
Now, other than that, of course, is we need to uh, set the height correctly. The models are currently overlapping, and that's because the height of these models, if we're going to just quickly here open the attributes, is set to 3.6. So the height of the floors here also need to be 3.6. So we're going to here tweak that like so. And then we have that now correctly. So they are now fitting exactly as we want. So our logic still holds up. So as you can see, they are still having the color. So here at the corner, we have like the smaller window and then we have like the larger window. And here at this part, we then have the smaller windows here in the middle. And then we just have like the bigger windows filled uh, there. So that's the building tool now fully working. We can of course hide the colors. And as last here, finish off the video. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the output. So first output here. Uh, so let me grab a non it. So this will be our basic geometry that we are currently looking at. Um, then we have, of course, our instancing points. So this is when I'm going to go to Unreal or Unity. I'm going to just send out point data. Uh, and each point will hold uh, a link to what model to use in the game. And our last uh, model or last output will actually be sort of like the floor slices. So as you can see, we have like multiple floors and we are now basically sort of like getting the slices of each floor. Um, so we can quickly use this to generate the roof or generate interior data. So that is all here available to you to start exploring more and more about with the tool. So in case you, you want to like scatter props in here, you can just like scatter some points and, and copy some models on that and things like that. So that's basically what I want to finish off this video. So this video was mainly about to get a basic understanding of the tool, how it works, how we can use patterns. And in the next videos, we're going to go and more and more in depth on how we can actually use this inside of a game engine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.